Hello everyone, this is Harbinger with another uh, redstone circuit to show off for you here. This time I've got a system set up that will randomly roll a pair of dice. Go ahead and give you a quick look at it working here, and then I'll give you a daytime run through of the circuitry and an explanation of how the thing actually works. Go ahead and demo before the explanation this time so that those of you that don't want to hear all the technical data don't have to sit through it. Just have a simple switch, flip it once, a little bit of a delay, and get the dice rolling, flip it again, again a bit of a delay, comes to rest after a while, after everything updates. Roll it a few times here so you can see that it is actually random. Notice too that this switch keeps rotating around. I actually did this one on an SMP server, and one of the fun little bugs of Redstone is that uh, switches like to move around from wall to wall and rotate themselves around for no reason. Functionally, though, everything with Redstone works just as well in multiplayer as it does in single player. And of course that bit of a delay between when you flip the switch off and when the dice actually come to rest is because it takes a while for everything to work its way around the circuit and update. Works out pretty well because since you can actually see the dice rolling on the faces of the die, um, that way you can't stop it where you want it to be. It's going to update a few more numbers after you flip the switch, so you have no control over where it's actually going to stop. That's it. I'll uh, wait for it to get daylight here, and then I'll give you a run-through of the circuit itself. Once this comes to stop again. Alright, and this is an overhead look at the entire project here, spread out before us. We have down here, uh, much like my other video with the seven segment display, this is still a seven segment display set up though to uh, show pips on a dice. We've got the uh, overlaying grid here which turns on the individual segments. Over there we have one set of the logic gates that control which number is displayed. Back there we have the two 3-bit random number generators stacked on top of it, or stacked next to each other. And there are the logic gates controlling the display of the other side of the, uh, well, the other side of the pair of dice. Give you a quick look at everything individually here and explain as I go. This right here is the back of the display. Just have redstone running into where the torches are mounted so that we can shut the torches off. Since the torches are on by default, I've got a uh, inverter here that by default will power up the back of the block holding the redstone switch or redstone torch, keep it off. What happens when each of these lines, which is an individual number, receives power here? disengages this line of redstone which is on top allowing the torches on the side here to power the redstone below shut off the inverter allowing the torch on the display to actually go on I explain this in more detail uh, in part one of the video on my seven segment display with a counter uh, you can always look that up later if you're actually interested in how that works. The logic gates controlling which segment displays are just a combination of AND and NAND gates. We're using binary output from the 3-bit random number generator to generate a number between 0 and 5 in binary. That's then decoded into 1 through 6, respectively, on the display. 
We've got the uh, three bit input here. This is the gate for, well, let's see, this is the gate for five, I believe. Yeah, which requires the one bit to be on, the four bit to be on, and the two bit needs to be off. So we've got inverters, all that good stuff. Sends power down there, turns on its respective line on the display. This acts with a binary input of 5, turning on the 6 on the display. So, get down here now, show you the random number generator and how I went about doing that. And this is the top of the heart of the project. This is one of the two 3-bit random number generators. Method that I've used for doing this, each bit is generated by connecting two clocks with different frequencies to each other wiring that into a toggle flip-flop and that uh, controls the bit. We've got three sets of these each in different combinations so they're never the same at any given time giving us essentially randomness. What we've got here is a seven torch clock down below we have a four torch clock and farther down here we have the toggle flip-flop. Had to throw the toggle flip-flop in here because otherwise the uh, way that the input, the way that the output of the two clocks wired together would uh, not update properly. It would uh, flash at too fast, too fast of a rate for the logic gates in the display to be able to keep up with it. It would also cycle too fast once the counters once the clocks were interrupted and it uh, basically screwed everything up. Down in the description is a uh, better explanation with uh, basically showing the signal that we get and how the toggle flip-flop converts that into something more usable. But again there are three of these here. This one was a four was a uh, four o'clock and a seven o'clock. This one is a this one next to it is a four o'clock and a five o'clock, and the third bit down there is a five o'clock and a seven o'clock. Now, of course, since we are dealing with three bits, what we actually would end up generating is a random number between zero and seven. We're dealing with dice, <clears throat> so what we would actually want in the end is a number between zero and five. So what I have here. Just a little NAND gate so that if the second and third bit, which would cause it to give us either a 6 or a 7 in binary, if those two bits are on, it forces it to, uh, forces it to generate another number. The way we do that, this right here is the actual power switch for everything. It's wired up to that switch back, at the, uh, back by the display that I was flipping. You stop it from rolling the dice by just inter basically interrupting the uh, each of the timers, each of the clocks. Once you force a uh, torch in the clock to be on, can't chase itself around anymore and stops everything. So that's what this right here does. Flipping the switch disables this line of redstone across all of these, allowing the clocks to cycle. If those two bits, bit 2 and bit 3, giving us too high of a number are on, it overrides the fact that that switch is off, and it'll continue to cycle until it uh, gives us a number that is within range. And that's basically it. Um, I've got plans to later on, and that is how you make a random dice rolling circuit with redstone. Got plans to maybe expand on this and uh, make it so that there are two switches that control, you know, their respective dice. To that way, you can have two players rolling against each other. Um, maybe keep track of three rounds. Display the round number on the tor on torches set up in the middle. Throw in some mathematical comparators that uh, determine which of the dice is rolled the highest. 
keep track of the number of rounds that each player has won on the side. Then after it hits round three, do some crazy uh, flashing redstone torch type thing on top, show who uh, has won the match. Don't know if I'm ever going to get around to that or not. I've got a couple of other fun little projects I have in mind. But more information and uh, details in the comments as to how this works. If you have any questions, feel free to leave me something. I'll uh, try to get back to you, either uh, either on either on here or on Reddit. But thank you for watching.